So 6.6, .6, determining sinusoidal equations. What I'm going to do now, which is really part two of 6.6, .6, is to do some homework questions with you. So I've chosen 5D, 6D, and 10, and um, we'll go through them slowly to make sure that you completely understand them and you can do them on your own. So you might want to try them first and see where you get stuck and come back and uh, watch the video. So 5D, all I've done here is graph the set of data that they gave you um, exactly like this here. And so make sure when you're graphing that you make sure you have an appropriate scale so you don't uh, run out of space and make it nice and neat so that you can understand it by looking at it now. The question asks you to give the simplest model, the simplest model for this sinusoidal function. So when they ask you for the simplest model, they're looking for the model that requires the least amount of movement from the y-axis. So I have two options. If I want to do a cosine function, I would go to this point here to start. If I wanted to label it as a sine function, I would have to go to this one here because remember that sine starts on your axis, which you can clearly see once you've, you've drawn it properly. So the simplest model then is going to involve a cosine function with a shift to the right of 10 degrees. So that would be minus 10, right? Okay, so let's get to work and figure out everything we need to know. And the first thing, you can even tell from the data that the axis is going to be 2 because it keeps returning from a peak to 2 and a trough to 2. So this is going to be y equals 2. Now 2, remember, in your equation is going to be that, um, well, let's write out the, the equation here. So y equals a cos k x minus d plus c. And the degrees are going to go out here, outside your bracket. So the cos of an angle. Okay. So my c is obviously going to be 2. <clears throat> my a value, once I've got the axis, I just need to count how many squares up here, or I subtract the peak from here. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So it gives me an amplitude of 3. And remember, it'll be the same going down here. So this is 3 units this way as well, because they're nice and symmetrical. So I'm going to use a cosine function. So y equals... It's a positive cosine function because I'm starting at the highest point here. So y equals 3 cos. Now I need to figure out what the k value is. Remember to find k. We had the little equation that, I don't know, where am I going to write this here? The period was equal to 360 degrees over k or k equals 360 times 1 divided by the period. So 360 over the period. So in this case, I need to know what is the period. So I need to know how far is it from this peak to this peak. So it starts at 10. It ends at 130. So that means 120 for the period. So k is going to be equal to 360 divided by 120, and that's going to give me 3 as well. So that's going to go in here, 3, and then I have my x, and I said I moved it to the right 10 degrees, so that's minus 10. Close the bracket, put your degree out front, and put your c value. And there you go. That's as easy as it is. Doesn't get much easier than that, does it? Let's hope there's that nice on your test. Okay, so the next question, they give you some information about a cosine function and it says determine the equation of the cosine function whose graph has each of the following features. So it's asking you for a cosine function. So we're going to give a cos. Do you give a cos? Okay, cosine function. So same, let's write out the equation again. y equals a cos k x minus d, close the bracket, plus c. So they give me the a value, 0 
So y equals 0 0.5 cos. The period is 720. So remember the period is 360, or k is equal to 360 divided by the period. We don't need to write that one out. So k is equal to 360 divided by the period. So that means k is going to be 1 half this time. So I have 1 half. Horizontal translation minus 56 degrees. So if it goes to the left 56, that's a minus a minus. So plus 56 degrees and the axis is minus 3. Yay, done. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay, and the last question, I spent a little bit of time graphing it so I wouldn't spend all that time wasting your time watching me graph. You can graph these yourself. I've done two of the questions from question 10. There's Athens and Moscow, and there was also Lisbon in there, but I chose to just do um, Athens and Moscow because they're farther apart, less squishy on the graph. So um, the hardest part here for me when I first looked at the solution, and it's always okay to look at the solution in the back of the book and see what they've done, is that it only goes to 11, and you know there's 12 months in the year, and is the first one January, or where does January go? So January is actually time zero here, so I put it here, so that's why it's at 12. The whole thing is finished in when I get to 11, but you know there are 12 months, so when you're determining your K, it's actually from 0 to 11, which means 12. As you know, you had 12 inputs here. So you had 12 pieces of data, so the cycle goes from... You have to think of January going from time 0 to the end of the first month. It's like, how old are you when you're... Um, when you're five years old, you're actually into your sixth year, right? So it's kind of a little backwards there. Okay, so let's take a look at Athens here. Now they want us to determine the amplitude. So remember the amplitude is going to be, um, I need to know what is the highest point and what is the lowest point, and I want half of that. So the amplitude here, so the highest point, which is this one in time six, so that would have been in... July, so 33, and the lowest number on here is 12. So the amplitude is going to be 33, subtract 12, and divide it by 2. So 33 minus 12, that's 21 divided by 2, so A is going to be 10.5. Now determine K. So K, we have a 12-month cycle, it's 12 months in a year, so the period is 12. So K is going to be 360 degrees divided by 12, and that's going to give you 30. Now, is there a shift? Well, it depends on what trig function you're going to use. If I use um, a negative cosine function, because I'm starting at the lowest point here, lowest ending in the lowest, so that means, remember we talked about the different trig functions. So if you have a cosine function, positive cos goes this way, negative cos goes this way. So this is best described, both of these graphs actually, by a negative cosine function. So there is no d here if I describe it as a cos function because it starts at the lowest point, which is 12. So I'm just going to write none. There's no, no shift. And where is the axis? So the axis, now that I have the amplitude figured out, I just need to know where is the highest point and subtract the axis. So I'm going to do 33 minus 10.5. And what's that going to give you? 33 minus 10.5. That's uh, 22.5, yep, 22.5. So if we drew the axis on here, it's kind of just above the 20, 22. So it's about here. So 
So in the next chapter, what you're going to be doing is using your equations to determine if I said, well, what will be the temperature at uh, uh, seven and a half months or whatever. So you'll, you'll see that when we do some more of those in, in the last chapter. And then you're done, Treg. Okay, so let's write out the entire equation now. So I have the temperature at time t is going to be equal to my a, 10.5. Oh, remember we've got something here. It's going to be a negative cosine function. So I want minus 10.5 cos. My k value was 30 um, t. And I'm not shifting it, so I just put degrees and 22.5. There you go. Now what if I wanted to do it as a sine function? Ooh, Miss Avra, why are you doing, trying to make this so hard? When you have a sine function, all you're doing is shifting it 90 degrees. Um, so sine, see how the sine is here? This would be starting here. So I want, what is this equation? So I would say, okay, I moved it 90 degrees to the right. So if I wanted to give the sine function, then I would just say, now if I started it here, um, if I move it to the right, that's minus, or if I go this way, let's say I continued this function out this way, and have my line here, so this would be a positive sine function, and this could have been a negative sine function. So if I did a negative sine function, it would be the same thing. I would have um, minus 10.5 sine, and then I have 30, and t plus 90, because I moved it to the left. So if you move it to the left, then you add 90. And this should be in brackets, plus 22.5. So there's, usually you're only asked for one. This equation here would be the one that I would choose. Okay, let's do the last one, which is Moscow. And we have to figure out the amplitude, do everything again here. So what is the amplitude? So what is A going to be equal to here? We need the highest point in Moscow temperature. That would be 23. The lowest is minus 9. So amplitude is going to be 23 minus a minus 9. And divide that by 2. And 23 plus 9 is 32 over 2, which is going to be 16. Let me just move this up for you. and I'm off the page. Okay, so determining K. K is going to be the same as the one that we did for Athens because we still have 12 months in the year. So K is going to be equal to 30. Don't even have to think about that one. The D, we're starting at the lowest point. So again, we're going to use a negative cosine function. And the axis for this one, we just need to figure that out. So if the amplitude is 16, the axis will just take the highest point, which is 23 minus 16, which is 7. So y equals 7 is the equation of the axis. So let's see. I always double check. It's kind of nice to, to draw the axis on here. And that way you can tell if, you know, if you made some really crazy mistake. It didn't look like it was halfway in your graph, then you would want to reevaluate your answer. Okay, so this is y equals 7 here. Okay, so we've got everything we need here. We have the amplitude, so the temperature at time t is going to be equal to negative 16 cos 30t degrees plus 7. And again, you could change this to a negative sine function, whatever you want. But I think this one is nice and neat, easy to calculate, and no mistakes. So there you go. There's a few questions for you. If you have any extras you'd like me to do for you, let me know right below, and I'll see if I find time for you. Hope you're having a good day. Bye.